welcome to python application programming sorting is one of the uh, regularly used methodology right so we were discussing about sorting so we'll continue that as we know that uh, sorting is one of the regular uh, function that we perform so we discussed about uh, sorting on uh, tuples right so just we'll try to recall because uh, sorting on tuple is not possible but we are discussing about sorting on a tuple so i think the previous session would have uh, made you clear like yes you can do a sorting on a tuple also but not directly indirectly right so sorting uh, what we are discussing here is what we have a dictionary so in that case once we have a dictionary we have a key and a value so which is which becomes a, a list of tuples list of tuples using a function called items so once you have list of uh, uh, tuples each tuple is of a is of a pair which is a key value so when you tell sort on a list where it is list of tuples the first entity is considered for sorting so now if first one is key then we get a sorting on key if first one is a value then we get a sorting on a value right so last class uh, last session we had discussed about this so same thing right so we are trying to perform a okay one second yeah so we have an items here where we have a dictionary then we convert we used a function called uh, items so that we got a tuple right so, oh sorry this is what list list of tuples so we have a list of tuples then when i perform a sort on that right what is my first one it's a key so sorting is based on the key in our example so it will be a b and c right similarly i can perform a sort on my value provided value comes the first as a first entry so for which we have used something called a sorted function where i can pass a parameter here we can pass a parameter here and that return value will be stored in a, a list which is nothing but again a list of tuples only right so now what is d dot items right d dot items are all these d dot items these are our d dot items now look at the first member first member is still a key still a key so in the case we are performing sorted d dot items so when you look at that what is being printed a b c is printed what was your input a c and b so again the sorting happened on what on the keys again so what was what we discussed in the last session again looking at we want to uh, perform sorting what on the values so what we told like okay fine when i create first i have a dictionary here then when i use an item function on dictionary what i want we want to change here the concept like what for each pair of tuple for each pair of tuple the first one to be a value second one to be a key so that's what we have done the modification if we do this modification then when we perform a sorting on the list which is nothing but list of tuples the first element is used for sorting so now when you look at we are adding value first and then the key look at a10 is now 10a similarly b1 is nothing but 1b and c22 is nothing but 22c so once you perform a sort on this the first element is considered which is nothing but the numbers are considered and in our example what we are telling we are calling sort with reversal so in the descending order so our output will be 22 10 and 1 22 10 and 1 right so you should be very careful like sorting on tuple not possible but yes when you convert that into a list of tuples you can perform the sorting on a list but you should be very careful whether you want to sort on a key or on a value so what to be remembered if i am sorting on a key then in the tuple the key should be my first entity right it should be like this if i am sorting on a value then what should be the members of a list my tuple should be value and then the key then only we will be able to sort on value here we will be able to sort on the key here now going further now so we have some requirement right what is that requirement top we have 10 in number which are most common words right which are now how to identify most common words 
in our previous session we had discussed about histogram right so where we have a word and number of occurrences number of occurrences now this will tell me like okay this is a word which is occurring four time there is another word which is occurring six times there is another word which is occurring twice there is another word which is occurring 12 times and so on so now what am i looking at we want most common words what do you mean by most common number of occurrences more in nature so out of that we want top 10 so for example in this list we want top 2 top 2 most common words so ours will be 12 and then the 6 and the corresponding word so this is our requirement so now what to do we need a key and a value word and a number of occurrences we had discussed that this can be achieved using the concept of dictionary using the concept of dictionary then what is that required after the using the concept of dictionary how do i achieve this right so there are a lot of options that are available to us so one of the options that we have here we'll discuss about it now Step number one, try to identify like what are the 10 most common words that are in a particular file or in a line, it can be anything, but our example is file handling. So now we will take a file, we will open the file, we have a file handler, we will have a file handler. Next, we will create a dictionary, why, why to create a dictionary because we want right. So I, in the file I want to read a word, how many number of times it is occurring, I want to group them together. I want to group them together. What I want to group? The word and the number of occurrences. So, how to group? Best option is what? Dictionary, right? So, we will create an empty dictionary, counts as a name of the dictionary, empty dictionary is created. What next? So, we keep updating everything into the dictionary, right? What is our dictionary name? Counts. So, now what will I update? word number of occurrence next word number of occurrence another word number of occurrence if the same word i will keep updating my number of occurrences right so all this i will store in the form of a dictionary so for line in okay i read line by line for line in the file handler i will split so i get all the words of that line so next i take each word where we use foreign i take each word and check if it is available Recall, we used one get method, right? If it is available, it will return word. So, it will return what was the previous value. We add one to that. If that word is not there in the dictionary, first time it is coming in, I need to update that value as one. So, what we will do? Get will return zero. I am adding one to that. So, if a word is first time coming into dictionary, we get one, zero plus one. If already word exists, take the previous value, add one to that. The new value will be updated. So, this whole thing, it is almost the same that we had discussed in the previous session, right? So, opening a file, reading line by line, splitting each line, then word by word adding that into a, our dictionary counts, right? So, then done. Next, here we will create a list by name LST. Now, here our dictionary is ready. Our dictionary is ready. Now, in dictionary, what are we supposed to check? Check with number of occurrences like example 1, 10, 14, 9, 8, 62 and so on. Check with these occurrences. We want a top 10 of them and the corresponding corresponding word also, right? So, list, empty list is created. Then we are calling what? Counts dot items. So, what is counts? Counts is nothing but our dictionary, right? So, when I say count dot items, we get two things. One is key, second one is value second one is value. Now, what are we looking at? We are not referring to key, we are referring to a value. We want top 10 values. So, in the case, I want to, uh, how do I achieve, right? So, now, you want a biggest number, how to check? Simple, you can use some function called max or you can write a logic where you start from the first element, you go till the last element in the uh, dictionary, try to look for the value which is higher, correspondingly pick up that word, particular word. Now, what if you want, uh, like in our example, 10 most common words, then how to? So, one, you start from here till here, pick the highest one, then leave the highest, start from here to here, pick the next lowest one, pick the next lowest one, like that. Or what is the other option? Best, 
you take this value, you sort on value. Once you sort on value, either ascending or descending order, you are able to pick that 10 or you are able to pick that range. So that concept is very easy then comparing one by one and taking the first highest, second, third and so on till 10. The best option put them sorted either in the ascending or descending based on your requirement pick them up. Right? So the same concept is adopted here. So we created an empty list then we called count dot item. So we got uh, a key and a value key value but important is this part where what is our requirement in this example is I want the value the highest one 10 highest one right 10 common one which is most used so or top 10 which is top 10 right so in the case as we are processing on a value when I perform a sorting the sorting should perform on a value not on a key so what we do we add a element to the list using append with a small change instead of key comma value we write value comma key value comma key so that when I call sort on this list the sorting is done on value sorting is done on a value. So now after this list is created next look at that list dot sort what is my list name LST so LST dot sort now we are telling reverse equal to true now reason why reverse equal to true maybe you, you can re eliminate that or if necessary you can do that if you skip that then ordering will be ascending order if you write this order will be the descending order that is it nothing else right now so here our list is sorted so now we have corresponding word and the value either ascending or descending. If it is ascending, lowest to highest. If it is descending, this is lowest to highest. Right? If it is, I will repeat again. Okay. So we have a list of all the entries in the dictionary. Sorry, uh, list after being sorted. Then if it is ascending, then we have lowest to highest if it is ascending in nature. Now, if it is descending, then we have the highest value to the lowest value. Now, either any of this you pick up. If you do this part, take last return. If you pick up this part, take the first return. That is all. Right? Now, so here list sort we have done, then we need to print it. So, we will tell for okay, here when you have LST, in LST you have two things. What are those two things? you have a key and a value but in the order reverse right value and key so you will tell for a particular variable for a particular another variable first one is value second one is key once you get you print that in any value right any order so you to you uh, according to you word is coming first and then the value if you want the other way around just a print modify the print statement now what is this part right list colon 10 so in this case what are we doing we do not have a start. So, in that case start with the first element go till 10 go till 10. So, now in this case in this case we have element starting from where okay first one second one third one fourth one fifth one and so on till 10th one. Now, why did we consider the first element which is the highest in nature because we told descending order. Right? If it was an ascending order, then we need to pick the last 10. Right? So, this says what? Start from 0, go till 10. Start from the first element, go till the 10th element. So, here based on our understanding, see here uh, where is the concept of uh, list coming in? Look at this part. Right? Val, comma, key. So, this is a list. So, what is LST in our case, LST in this case, in this example is nothing but collection of tuples. It is a list of tuples where tuple values are value comma key. One tuple has what? Value comma key. Second tuple has value comma key and so on. So, it is nothing but list of tuples. So, this is an example program which will demonstrate as what? Like this is nothing but new, not a new program, right? So, last time in our previous sessions, we had discussed about uh, the programs talking about what? How to read, how to split them. Then we also discussed about uh, how to get the values, right? Either a value and a key or a key and a value in a different order 
and we also discussed about sorting all that put together is one example here right so now we'll go further try to look for one special component that is available in python which is majority of the time we use that in machine learning right so when i try to read a data i have in a different form which i want to convert that into a different form and store it directly into a list so for which uh, not writing three or four lines of code a uh, one line of code can help me to do all those things right so we look into it that's a facility provided by python it's nothing but something called as a shorter version of it shorter version of what right our previous one right now look at this part you have c equal to a 10 b1 c22 So this is, this is the one which we are discussing c equal to a b equal to 1 c equal to 22 then we are creating a list then we are writing a code where we are trying to uh, update them right so now what is that shorter version of it right so print sorted we are calling a function sorted but what is the uh, uh, difference between a sort function and a sorted function sort you do not pass any parameter, but sorted you can pass a parameter. Now what is important is look for the parameter that we are passing here. It is a list, it is a list, look at the code inside that v comma k for k comma v in c dot items, very peculiar one right. So you, you will try to break that one c comma item. So what it will give me c is nothing my, my dictionary items are nothing but the elements which will be in the form of a key comma v k comma v which is nothing but key comma value now okay one point to remember k comma v need not be the k comma v all these are the user defined variables right so it need not be k it can be anything but should be appropriate that's it right okay so item c dot items will give me a pair k comma v which is nothing but key comma value then what am i doing for k comma v in c dot item so first time it will be this is a v is nothing but 10 now what am i doing there right so not to this we'll go back uh, look at what are we doing it for the list append v comma k we are writing v comma k so in that case we are writing a code for appending now look at this shorter code what does we have v comma k that is all so look at the occurrence v comma k so in that case what it is doing this is a list for the list it is adding all the elements each element is a tuple and what is a tuple first one is value second one is k so in that case this whole set of code okay one second Okay, this whole set of code is doing me what? It is nothing but creating a list. First time it will be a and 10 where this is k, this is v. So it becomes 10 a, next time it is 1 b, next 22 c, end of it. And each one is a tuple like this right? with Okay, so now we are passing this to sorted, right? So sorting happens on what? 10, 1 and 22. Sorting happens on 10 and 1, 22. So now when you sort, what did we specify here? We did not tell ascending, descending, by default ascending. So look at that, what is our output? 1B, 10A, 22, C. So now if you compare this with our previous code where we have temp equal to list for k equal to this remains same but look at this code this code is replaced with what a smaller just one text v comma k that's all right so that is the advantage of python programming which is called as what comprehension list comprehension it's called this concept is what list comprehension right so creates a dynamic list in this case we are making a list of 
reversed tuples and then sort it right what is the meaning of reverse tuple uh, we we have that tuple in the form of k comma v we are taking that as v comma a right and then sorting it so list comprehension is majority of the time used right? now another example right so if you look at this list of ints in string this is one variable name right so this happens to be a list now why list because we have a square square bracket here so what are my elements 42 65 12 what is the objective of this program right now what i'll do is i'll not tell you the object of the program we'll go through the program and try to figure out what is the objective right but what is the uh, way that we should proceed first logic objective and then write a corresponding program but as we have the program already here we'll try to understand that program and figure out what is the question for this or the problem statement okay list of ints in string so name of the string with a values like 42 65 12 all are string next list of int a square bracket indicating that empty list then for x in good in the for x in this so a time first time x will be 42 next time x will be 65 next time x will be 12 okay first time 42 so it will come down here append 42 oh what are we doing here so we are converting that into an integer so this string is converted into an integer and it is added to the list added to the list so in that case next time again for loop x value will be 65 which is a string which is converted into integer and is added and then similarly 12 then we can tell as all the elements of the list of this list are numbers then we can tell sum we will be able to print the sum. Now, this is the concept of list, right? So, how list comprehension can be used here, right? So, now when you figure out here, what are we doing? Given a, given a list which has set of, which are all strings, we are converting that into an integer and finding the sum. So, list comprehension if I do, then what what is that I can eliminate? So this code can be eliminated, but anyway, calling the function sum is a must. But this code can be eliminated where I need not create an empty string automatically in the string itself. I can have a value and a loop here, which happens to be a list comprehension, right? So what is that where? Eliminate this, but for loop will also be there. But we can we need not have this, we can use the shorter part of it. So, based on the previous slide, what we can guess? One, this will not be there. Second, what will be my first part? First part is, what is that I want to add? In our case, it is I want to convert that into integer and update that in the list. So, I will say int x. Then what will be my loop? Uh, my loop will be this for loop. And right? maybe we will cross check that. Okay, This remains same no change in that then we have list equal to yeah square bracket we will create an uh, list okay now we have that right int of x for x in the list so that also remains same right then we have anyway we have to call the function we called it so now this is our list comprehension right so this happens to be reiteration what are we supposed to do here Right, so we had something like list dot append. Right, go back, check here. We had what? Uh, append the list dot append and so on. So and we created. A, so if I forget to create an empty list, we will end up in problem. Right. So and again calling a extra function. So these two lines of code is replaced with one simple like what I want, and then how do I run that? Right? So, how do I access that each value of x which is nothing but like this. So, I have a list output list right. So, this is our list comprehension right. So, which happens to be very easy no? like for each time of x what am I supposed to do in the list. So, whatever I do will be updated in the list. So, this stay back in the list. So, first element, second element, third element and so on. So, based on my requirement, I can change this whole part 
and, uh, and I need not write append all that we can have directly right which is nothing but a comprehension list comprehension which is measured at the time we use that in machine learning right? where we have a data we will try to read that and we want to find a sum or a yeah, lot many things can be done at this part. We discuss like oh, that is without list comprehension and this one as with list comprehension right. So maybe this slide will give us more detail about the comparison right. So both of them are available where we can compare. So if you look at what are we eliminating this we are eliminating this we are eliminating this will remain as it is and this portion also will remain as it is look at that we have index then we have a for loop that remains as it is but we, we are not supposed to create an empty list and not supposed to add a element into the list. So that has been eliminated which is nothing but a list comprehension right. So as I po pointed out like regularly we keep using this right. Now why advantage of uh, list because it has lot of facilities that are available either it could be sorting or max or any mathematical calculation that you want to do we have lot of functions for that. Now we will figure out few exercise problems on uh, the tuples that we had discussed right. Now so fruit is a tuple with values apple, banana and cherry right. Now we know that tuple are almost same as list but only change is what modification right. So accessing remains same then performing few functions right not all functions few functions which are applicable for uh, tuples and also for list. So based on that correct syntax to print the first item of a fruit tuple. So how to print the first item right first item means what apple here we know that the first item index in terms of list is 0 m1 in tuple also 0. So in that case what it, what this should be this should be something like fruits of 0 which should give us apple right or anything different think about it if this was a list then we would have written list name of 0 and if it was something like a, a tuple then what tuple name of 0 right with the same understanding we wrote tuple name of 0 right so we will check what is the right answer yeah perfect so fruits of 0 right which which gave us what the first element so this index is 0 index 1 index 2 right? next use the correct syntax to print the number of items in the fruit tuple oh so we are supposed to find number of items so indicating what how many elements are there right so if this was fruit a list if this was a list then what we would have done recall we would have used a function called len right to find how many members are there what is the length of it right. Similarly can we use len if yes then how to use len so maybe we could have written fruits dot len as a function right we will check what is the right answer okay len of fruit so in the case we are passing fruit as a parameter to len we are passing fruits as a parameter to len but still the function name remains len. Right, which will tell us how many members are there in this tuple. So in our case it is 1, 2 and 3, 1, 2, 3 but be careful 1, 2, 3 I told as an item but when it is index 0, 1 and 2 right. So be careful like I, I am using a word 1, 2, 3 so it is our understanding like first element, second element, third element but when it is an index it is always 0. Right? So what is the solution for this len len with fruits why fruits because uh, fruits is nothing but our name of the tuple okay next use negative indexing to print the last item of the tuple to print the last item of the tuple so now this is at index 0 this is at index 1 this is at index 2 so in that case how to access the last element last element is cherry so how to write fruits fruits of 2 I am able to get it but what is the problem here how do I know that uh, 2 is my last index right so that is again problem like I can use len function minus 1 all that but instead we have an option in list where we can have a negative numbering accessing as index as negative 
index as negative. So, if index is positive, then it will start from beginning. If index is negative, it will start from backside, end. It will start from end. This is from begin, right. So, now when I tell minus 1, so we have a negative. So, start from ending. Minus 1 tell you take the first element. You take the first element. Now, in our case, when I write fruits of minus 1, then in that case start from end 1. So, in that case consider only 1 1. So, this will be our output. So, what we want? Use negative indexing to print the last item in the tuple. Yes, we got the last item in the tuple, right. If it was not negative indexing, then uh, we have to find out what is my last. So, how to find use L E N. I will get the answer as 3 minus 1 will give me the actual value. So, what I can do? I can write here using this concept, I can write fruits of L E N. I call a function minus 1 which will give me this, right. So, or maybe I can store this in the complete variable and use the variable here so that I will get the last element. But look at that, uh, getting, fetching what is the length of it, again subtracting, performing an arithmetic operation, then we get a result and then do that. So, lot of processing involved, but negative indexing an advantage, right. So, not, nothing expression is being evaluated, I have a value already, use that value, fetch the value. So, this is the most easiest part, right. So, where we have an advantage of negative indexing. Okay. Then, okay, what I will do is I will just uh, keep it, okay, so that it is not visible, we can just figure out, right. Okay. Use a range of indexes to print what? Third, fourth, and fifth item. So, we want a third item, fourth item, fifth item. Now, please remember when the problem statement is like this third, fourth, fifth item, is the question talking about index? Is this talking about an index or it is talking about a position? It is talking about a position. Example, apple, if you take example as apple, what is the index? 0, what is the position? 1. So, it is the first element in the tuple. So, I tell position is 1, but index stands from 0. So, I will tell index 0. So, now third, fourth, fifth, whatever we are referring, third, fourth, fifth, is it, are we talking about a indexing or position, right? If it is a concept of indexing, then this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 totally I have 7 elements. So, if it is on position, then it will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, this is nothing but our position, this is on indexing, index, right. So, now use the range of index, the question is telling about what to use, print the third, fourth and fifth item in the tuple. So, it when you look at this, close this part, print the third, fourth, fifth item of the tuple, then in that case we identify that it is a position, right. Use the concept of index, get these positions printed, right. So, now what is my third one? Yeah, this is my third element, fourth element, fifth element, I have to stop here, right. So, in that case, I have to start with index 2, I have to start with index 2, go till 5. Why should I go till 5? Because once I go till 5, I get 2, 3, 4, fifth is not processed. That is the concept of indexing here, right. So, we will look into it, what is the exact answer for this? Yeah, what is the answer? Answer is 2 is to 5, right. So, start from 2, go till 5. So, now many, many a times we make a mistake. What is that mistake? When somebody says like use the uh, use a range of index to print third, fourth, fifth, oh, we treat this as indexes. But be very careful. This particular line is ta not talking about any indexing. So, in that case, it talks about a position. So, once it is a position, my first element position is 1. You should be very careful there, right. So, hence, based on this understanding, we wrote. Now, assume that somebody thought that this is an index, then what will, what will be his answer, his or her answer? So, if it is an index, I want 3, I want 4, I want 5, right, but I do not want 6. So, in the case, where to start? Start from 3, go till where? Go till 6, 
right. So, now what is the actual answer 2 is to 5, but what are we, how, how did we get 3 is to 6 because we thought that this is an index you should be very careful. If the question is talking about index then no problem we will consider index. If it is missing majority of the time they are talking about a position. So, if they do not specify as a index then 100 percent it is about the position and normally nobody will tell about index here. So, it will be about the position because indexing we do not know in which programming language index will be 0 another programming language index will be 1. So, we want a common here. So, which talks about the position position will never change indexes can change, but position will never change. So, the answer for this is what 2 is to 5 because it is based on the position. Right. So, it is 2 is to 5 where 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, we want these 3 elements, we want these 3 elements. So, we understood. Then how to access? Access is always through indexing. So, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, start from 2, go till 5. So, where we wrote 2 is to 5. But why 5 is not being processed? Because that is the concept. We will go till 5, the fifth element will not be or fifth indexed element will not be processed. So, in that case, if I have a print statement, we will print only this cherry, orange, kiwi, that is all. So, melon is not printed because it is not processed. What is the processing here? Print. Okay. So, these are the few exercises that we have uh, covered. Right? Now, if you recall what did we cover in uh, module 3? Right? So, we told like module 3 is talking about collection. So, recall what, what, what collections we understood. Right? So, if you recall we told module 3 is nothing but something related to collections. We discussed about 3 important things. Right? Any guess like what was the last one because just now we covered no? Yeah, perfect it is tuples. Right? Then uh, giving something to your mind what was the first, first one think about it which we compared the tuples and dictionary yeah perfect it is list. Then as usual we repeated that word right it is a dictionary. So, now what did we understand? What is a list in each of this? In each of this, what, what did we cover? Right? So, are we able to write a program based on our problem requirement to identify whether it can be solved using a list or dictionary or tuple? Definitely, yes, right. So, we discussed about what is a list, then why lists are available in uh, Python and how to create a list and what are the facilities that are available like functions and uh, why we need a list and uh, a special properties of list also we discuss like whether it is editable or not right then what functions are available when i call a function whether a new list will be created or a old list will be updated similarly we also discussed about dictionary tuples all that right and majority of the time what we do we compared a list with dictionary a list with tuple dictionary with tuple right where we understood like when to use what and so on right and another uh, point that to remember is list enclosed in square bracket and each element of the list is separated by comma dictionary enclosed in curly braces. Then each element is separated by comma, but each element will also be have a colon here a separation or a delimiter where first one is a key second one is a value. Then in the case what about tuple? Yeah, we have these braces and separated by comma again. Right? Now, what about the elements here? What are the data type of all of this? What are the data type of all of this? We do not have any restriction. So, in that case, this one can be 40, this one can be a character A, this can be a 96.5 and so on. So, we do not have any restriction on the data type. That is what the advantage of collections in Python are. Then most of the functions are applicable for list, yeah they are also applicable for dictionary, they are also applicable for tuples. Now say for example, you have uh, some 10 numbers, 
then how to find an average we discuss that right so how take the first number add take the second number add take the third number add sum of all that divided by 10 but think if you can convert this into a list your job is done or maybe you you think of converting that into a tuple your job is done what either it is a list or tuple then i need not add them and then multiply i can directly call a function or a method which helps me to do the lot of things so what is that we have learnt in module 3 right so if there is a requirement like i have few set of numbers like more than one number right i can group them either that group can be a list either it can be a dictionary or a tuple based on what i'll decide like okay i have some set of numbers where I, I i have only the numbers i don't have a keyword that i can attach i do not have a label that i can attach go with list or tuple then out of these two which one to choose now you have some group values where you will not change the value you keep on adding that value then go with best option tuple because it will it will help you to not to modify anything nothing goes wrong but when it is a list yeah you have an option of modification right now you have a group where you have lot of values inside that and each value is have their own key each value have their own label in that case the only option that is available is dictionary right then we also discussed like in module 2 we had discussed about files but did we use that in module 3 yeah while programming what we told we want to read a line that line can come from a keyboard or the line can come as a part of my variable or the line can come from a file so where file handling also we discussed about it so what we'll do is uh, this is the end of module 3 now in the next session we'll try to figure out like okay the concept that we have discussed in module 2 the concept that we have discussed in module 3 we also discuss about program but the most of the programs were on this slide right so i told when we run this program we get this output but our next session will be more of live where we try to type the program based on the concept find a solution for a problem run that if any errors we will try to rectify that so that will be our next module where we will we'll try to learn more of programming so concepts okay done but parallelly we should also have a good knowledge of programming how to use that theoretically what we have learned convert that into a program where it can solve a problem right so next session we more we will talk about the programs thank you